Hello and welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial on how to make a third-person shooter character controller. This is going to be the first part of several, but this is intended to get you to a working space where you have a character that moves in third person and can run around and jump. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And we're going to hop right into how to do this. So the first thing I want to say is that I've made a scene. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It's just three blocks in a little staircase. Just out of random cubes because I had 30 seconds. The second thing that I've done is imported a capsule. For right now this is going to be our character. In later episodes we'll go over animations and movement and things like that. But for right now we're just going to move around with a capsule because that is a pretty simple way to do it. So the first thing you do when you want to start out and get to this point, you're going to go in here to Game Objects and we're going to create a 3D object that is a capsule. Once we do that, we're just going to click and drag the main camera. Click and drag, it should be up here. Click and drag this right onto this capsule. And this capsule, when it moves, so too will the camera. Later on, we'll create a character controller in another episode, but for right now, that is a makeshift pseudo camera controller and it's pretty simple. And that's just going to be the first part to get us to a working level in our first episode. The other things that we're going to do is over on the right side here in our inspector, once we have the capsule selected, we're going to add a component, and that component is going to be called a character controller. Uh, you can just add one. You don't have to change any of the settings. We just want to have one. This sort of takes the place of a rigid body. So... Uh, you, you don't need to have a rigid body with a character controller. If you do, it can mess some things up. So if you have one, take it off. If you don't have one, don't add one. So with that in mind, we're going to create a script called Player Controller. So I've already created this, uh, but it's perfectly empty. So we're going to go over how to do that and what we need to put into it. So this script is fairly simple. On this first episode, we'll be adding things as we go through and trying to make it more and more realistic as we go through. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a call to this character controller on our capsule right here. So this character controller is a component and we want to be able to reference that component in our script. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to type character controller and that is the component and we are going to call this my car controller and it doesn't really matter what you call it uh, that's just what I called it uh, but this is a reference to a variable of character controller and when we get to the start function we'll reference it to this specific character controller so but for right now we're just going to create that and it's just a variable leading to that we're going to need a few more. So these are private variables to be used within the script. So everything that follows this we're going to use in this script and we're going to add some things later on in the next few episodes. But for right now we only need four things to get started. So we're going to create private float speed. This is going to be the speed, the movement speed of our character. You can leave this public if you want, but for the most part it's pretty good practice if you're not referencing it outside of the script to leave it as private. If you leave it as public, you'll be able to change it within the GUI, but it's pretty good practice to leave it as private. And if, as another little side trick, if you really want to be able to reference it within the GUI, you can just come up here and type in bracket serialize field bracket and you'll be able to see that private variable within the GUI. The next thing that we're going to want to do is do another private function uh, and this one is also going to be a float and this one is going to be called jump force. So the jump force is going to be how high or the amount of force that we're putting into the character controller to make it go up in the air before gravity takes over. And speaking of gravity, we need to add that gravity. So this one we're not ever going to change outside of the script. So we're going to create a private const, so a constant variable. We're never changing this outside of this one place. And that's also going to be a float. 
And this one's just going to be called gravity. And we're going to have to add values to these. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add values to these three functions, just initial values that we can change later. I found that higher gravity makes it feel more realistic. So if you want a more artistic and, and sort of cartoony vibe to a character controller, go with a little bit lower of a gravity. Go to something closer to 15 or 20. If you want something a little more realistic, 25 to 30 is going to be a good range where you feel like the character controllers, when you walk off an edge, drops at a realistic pace. As far as jump force goes, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 7 for right now. Um, we'll be able to change it within the script. And the same for speed, I'm also going to set that to 7. Now that we have those three things, we have one last thing to create. And this one I'm going to separate by one line because it's a little bit different. And this is, a, this is our movement vector. And vectors can be a little, little scary at first, but they're really not that bad. So we're going to create a private vector 3. So this is a storage of three bits of information, our x, y, and z axis. And we're going to call this moving, because this is the vector on which our character will be moving. So those are all the initial variables we'll need for this whole first episode. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but we do, we do need those. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do our void start. Usually these are generated when you first... Uh, don't know why I did that. Um, these are generated when you first open up a script. Um, but I like starting with a clean script. That's just a personal preference of mine. So the first thing we're going to do is going to take our character controller and we're going to tell it that it's not just a character controller, it's this exact character controller. So in start, when we first load the script, when you hit that play button, it's going to say, hey, what's this character controller? And you're going to say, hey, my character controller is this one. And we're going to say, get component. And we're going to give it the component. And the component name is character controller, and that's a function. So we just need to put a little thing there. So what that says is when you hit, hit play, my character controller is on what this script is attached to, this capsule get component character controller. So it comes along here, finds all the components, find the one that's called character controller, and this is that reference. So we know that we are dealing with this character controller, and that's going to give us a couple things that we'll use later on. The second thing that we're going to do in start is we're going to set our movement to zero at the start of the game. It's not strictly necessary, but uh, it's an extra little precaution. So we're just going to say our moving, our, our initial movement vector, our x, y, and z, it, it's, it's, it's not happening. So vector 3.0 says that there's no movement happening. And then every frame after this, we'll go through and, and make that happen. Next, we're going to do our update. And for right now, this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create our next function um, because our update is going to call that function. And that's all our update is going to do. So our next uh, function is going to be called void movement. And this is where we're going to place a majority of the movement code. So we only call it when we want to. So. So we're just going to call movement in our update. And then anything we want to have happen here, we're just happening in this function. That way, if we want to later change this to a fixed update, if that's something that your project requires or something like that, we can move around the movement code without having to copy paste everything. But for right now, private void update, you're calling the function movement. And now we're going to write the function movement, which is pretty simple. Uh, but we're going to use some of the things that when we attach this character controller to our script, uh, th this is one of the things that it's going to, going to allow us to do. So one of the things it's going to allow us to do is check to see if our character is on the ground. So one of the built-in booleans of that character controller is, is grounded. Um, so we need to reference that character controller. So my character controller dot is grounded. I was going to say if that character controller is on the ground, meaning that it is hitting a collision. So if it collides with something and stops moving with our gravity, it's grounded. So 
if that's happening, we're going to execute this code. And here we're going to set our initial movement inputs. So moving is going to be set equal to a new movement, right? Because we are now giving an input. So it's going to be a new, totally new movement vector than the one that we had the last frame. So we're going to create a new vector 3. And inside this vector 3, um, as I type this, you'll see that there's like a, a one of three thing here. And if I use the up and down arrows in, in Visual Studio, it'll tell you some of the things that you can want. You can create this function as empty with two parameters or three parameters. And we're going to be using the three parameters because we're going to be using our x, y, and z coordinates because those are the movements we're going to be using in our vector. So the first one that we're going to want is our x. So this is our horizontal axis in the 3D game. So we're going to do an input that get axis. So we're going to get the axis for that input. And that's going to be our x. And we'll go over what axis that is in a second. Second, we have our float y. This is our y axis. And our character controller isn't going to go up unless we're jumping or something like that. So we're going to set this as 0. And then we're going to go on to z which is our vertical axis, meaning that, you know, on an XY plane, we're going vertical. If we're looking down at the ground, our X is our horizontal movement, and our Z is our up and down movement along that plane. So this is going to be our vertical input axis. So input dot get axis, and then we're going to put that one in. And that's going to be our whole moving thing. So we need to name these axes. And uh, we need to name these axes. And they are vertical and horizontal. So if you haven't changed uh, any of the default settings of your project, when it comes to axes, these will work perfectly fine. If you have changed them, I'm assuming you know where to find them. and you can just put the name of whatever you've changed them to. But the default is very simple. It's horizontal and vertical. So when we use the input axis of horizontal, it's going to be looking at our left arrow and our right arrow, as well as A and D on our keyboard. And likewise, when we're using the vertical axis, it's going to be looking at the up and down arrow, arrow as well as the W and the S keys on our keyboard. So when one of those are pushed, we're going to get a new vector 3 axis and that's going to be our movement. Additionally, right after that, we are going to multiply that by the speed at which we change up here in our in our private float. So we're going to say moving times equals speed. And that just allows us to sort of control how fast the character is going from the GUI. Now, the only other thing we need to add for as far as like input commands go it is a jump one and luckily the unity is really good about adding these horizontal vertical and jump axes and, and and buttons so we really don't need that much code to do this either so we're just going to say if so we're still within this if is grounded so if you're on the ground and if you do an input i'm going to sc scroll down just a little bit so if you're on the ground and if you do an input where you press the button and that button's name is jump oh, and that button's name is jump something happens well what's that something we want to have happen we want to change the y-axis so the up of our 3d space so we're going to change our vector 3 that we have set this as 0, so our, our vertical part, our, our jump, is 0 unless we press our button for jump, at which time we change just the y part of that, and we're going to set that equal to our jump force up here. So we're going to set that equal to our jump force, and that's going to apply a jump motion when we press the button jump. So after all this, 
within our movement, we still have one last thing to apply before we do the move, making all of this work. We need to have gravity work, and the gravity needs to work on the character every frame. So we're also going to be using the moving.y, so gravity applies straight down. Unless your game is changing gravity, gravity should apply straight down. And we're going to say that that gravity that applies straight down minus equals our gravity. And we're going to multiply this by time dot delta time, because that is allowing, going to allow us to have a constant pushing down. And finally, the very last thing that we want to do on our movement is we're going to do the actual move here. So we're going to do our character controller. So my character controller that we referenced before, this is the one that's right here, has a really cool built-in function. It's pretty simple. It's called dot move. And that takes in a vector 3. And hey, you know what we just did? We just made a vector 3 right up here. So moving is the name of our vector 3. So we're going to say moving. And then again, we want to just flatten this out and make it constant. So we're going to do a time uh, delta time to finish it out. So that's pretty simple. Again, we only used four different variables. We set our character controller to be equal to the one that's attached to the to the capsule at the start. We set our initial movement to zero, and then we coded up the vector three that is our movement, and then we said, hey, move off this vector three. So now, when we come to our, our game, it should compile that code. It should be free of any errors. And I just want to say, if you're having any trouble with this script saying dot move isn't working or dot is grounded isn't working the most common error is that you've actually named your script instead of player controller character controller and the code gets a little confused it's thinking that you're talking about the script and not the unity engine character controller that's right here so so if if that's happening to you it's saying like hey i you know i, I don't know what move is i don't know what is grounded is just come up here and change the name of your class to something that's not character controller. So after we've done that, we can come in here to play. And we'll see that if I use WASD, I move around. The camera is falling because it's attached to the character. I can also use my arrow keys to move as well. Additionally, if I hit space, that is the default jump command. But right now, that jump is a little too low for my taste because I can't quite get up that that staircase. So earlier when we did the serialized fields in our code right here, this is going to allow us to edit the speed and jump force within the GUI. So we just come down here to where we've added the script. We can change the speed if we want to go a little bit slower this time. Let's change that to 6 and we want to change our jump force to 10 just to jump a little bit higher. We can go ahead and do that. And then we hit play and when we go in you can see we jump just a little higher. So that follows everything that we need to do to do the initial setup of a character controller. Next week we're going to be creating a camera controller because it is a little jarring to have it just be a direct child of the character and that's not really a uh, it's not really a great way to handle how the the camera moves in a third person shooter so uh, as far as movement goes we have our basic setup we might add something like a sprint next time or in another time um, but we have our basic WASD and jump and it works with gravity as well and we can change all these things to fit the feel of your game so if you have any questions, please let me know down below. I'm always more than happy to help. Join our Discord. The link is in the description below. We're always happy to help there. We have a questions support page that we're pretty good about checking. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And we'll see you next week.